Hello, this is Mr. Stewart bringing you the 10.1 quiz about simple probability. This quiz starts us off with the new mathematics of probability. I say new mathematics because for 7th graders, uh, very few students have had experience with calculating probability up to this point uh, just because it hasn't been part of previous classes. So this is brand new content and it's very cool. I really like probability. It's very exciting stuff. Uh, so let's just jump right in and start talking about these questions. Question number one reads, what is the probability of each event occurring? And then you will want to put it in a fraction form using, you know, the slash sign. If you're, if you're, you're going to be typing the answer. So just put it in fraction form. No spaces, just, you know, one slash three or whatever, okay? Which really is going to translate to the fraction of one third. It's all the same, okay? So there are four different things that we need to consider the probability of each one of these things. So tossing a coin and landing on a head. So, so we're going to assume that like everything here has just an equal, has an equal chance of happening to any other thing. For example, tossing a coin and landing on a head. The probability of anything occurring, the probability of an event occurring, an event or an outcome, the probability of an outcome occurring, I should, I should probably call this outcome, probably of an outcome is is the number of favorable outcomes number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes possible outcomes so when you think about it for this coin one we'll just talk about okay there's there are two possible outcomes and the one we're looking for is the fact that we're landing on a Heads. So the question is from this coin, how many how many of those two outcomes are there that are actually going to be heads? So you think to yourself, okay, it's the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. You put that in fraction form and that will be your answer. Question number two is asking you to, th okay, think about this. If you're going to roll a dice and it's just a regular six-sided dice, we would call this six the six part, that would be your favorable outcomes. That's going to, I'm sorry, take that back. That would be your, the number of possible outcomes. There are six possible outcomes. Then the, the, the favorable outcome you're looking for is rolling a, a three. And how many different ways with this dice can you roll a three? So that's your favorable outcomes. You say there's only one. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the next one, choosing an even number, in the numbers 1 through 7. So let's see, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's say they were number tiles and they were in a bag and they were you were randomly selecting them. We should probably put randomly selecting them. But the fact that you're randomly selecting them. So, so first of all, how many different possible outcomes are there? Well, you'd say there's, you know, there's seven of them. There's one through seven. And then you would say, how many of those are the favorable outcomes? Remember, favorable outcomes are the even numbers. So how many of these are even numbers? You can say there's one, two, three. So the probability is the number of favorable outcomes, you know, your three, over the number of possible outcomes. Okay. Finally, what outcome is the most likely to occur? One, two, or three. So now what you're what this one is asking you to do is from questions one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. Which of these has a better chance of of occurring? Or in other words, of the three numbers that you place in these bl blanks, which one has a higher percentage or a higher fraction or one closer? to one whole number. And whatever one that happens to be, you're going to put in blank number four. Okay. All right. Um, question number two reads, a marble is pulled out of a bag holding four blue marbles, three red marbles, eight yellow marbles, and five green marbles. What is the probability that the marble pulled from the bag 
is red. It says, please put it in, in percent form. So to understand this, I, I think sometimes it's nice to draw. So first of all, I'm going to say, okay, what's the probability? This is how we denote it. We usually say, what's the probability of the marble being red? Now remember, the probability of any outcome is is calculated by in fraction form by the number of possible outcomes over the number of total outcomes. I'm sorry, the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So it's interesting. We got to we got maybe maybe just draw. So we got a bag here, got a bag, right? And, uh, and then it looks like a box, but let's just say it's a bag. It's a paper bag. We'll call it a paper bag. And this paper bag has let's see. Um, Uh, it's got uh, blue. It's got four blue marbles. One, two, three, four. It's got three red marbles. So it's got one, two, three. It's got eight yellow marbles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's got five green marbles here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And uh, and it's asking, okay, if I reach in and grab a marble at random, okay, um, what is the chances that that one marble I pick is a red marble? So your favorable outcomes is going to be this the red right here. So you got to count how many favorable outcomes there are, and that's going to be over the number of possible outcomes, which means you're going to have to count how many possible outcomes there are in the entire experiment. Okay. Um, it, it's just interesting to note that the red marble is the least likely to occur. The yellow marble, if you pulled a, 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 at random, you're most likely to pick a yellow marble because there are more yellow marbles than any other kind of marble. The second most likely to occur would be green, and the third most likely to occur would be blue. So it's just kind of an interesting one. Make sure you put it in fraction form. Um, yeah, I, I suppose reduce if you can, but it didn't say to reduce, so you might just leave it as just that. If, if it's possible to reduce, I'm not going to say it is or is not. But uh, Just remember that the probability of a red is the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. Possible outcomes. Okay, question number three reads, the probability of tossing a penny and it landing on a tails is one out of two. Okay, or one to two, the ratio. What is the percent chance? What percent chance is the outcome of this tail? So a lot of times in probability, we talk about things happening. So we say like there's a one, let's say there's a one in four chance of something happening. Now, we would also say that there is a 25% chance of that thing occurring. So these two probabilities are the same. And by the way, we could also say that there is a 0.25 chance uh, that this thing occurs. All of these are the same value. They're the same number. So when we, when we do this, um, it, it's just important to understand that, that how to convert you know, a fraction to a decimal to a percent and vice versa, which is one of the reasons why we spent so much time in chapter 6, which is all about converting fractions to decimals and percents. So when, this, when you do this, um, make sure you just put the percent in, in that, and, uh, uh, and that, should, that should be good. Okay, so there are seven pizzas. Last question. There are seven pizzas ordered for your birthday party. So three of those pizzas are pepperoni, two of those pizzas are sausage, and two of those pizzas are plain cheese. So three plus two is five, plus two is seven. So the first pizza box is open for the party guests to start eating. The question is, what is the probability that the first pizza box opened is not a pepperoni pizza. And I want you to put this in fraction form. So a lot of times, mathematically speaking, we, we actually start talking about percentages of things occurring, or sometimes we talk about percentages of things not occurring. Okay, so I'm gonna make up my own example here. 
Okay, so I just made up my own example. Um, in this particular party, there are actually 10 pizzas that are being ordered. So there are 10 possible outcomes. Like if I'm just pick, picking a pizza box at random, there are, and I'm just making up, this is my example down here, just so you know. So separate from here, but same idea applies, okay? So if I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, all right, there are 10, there are 10 different pizzas here. There's five sausages, four pepperonis, and one cheese. There's 10 possible outcomes. That's going to be my denominator. And the discussion board talked a lot about what the denominator and numerator represent in a, in, a, in a probability. The denominator represents specifically the total number of outcomes, while the numerator is representing the possible favorable outcomes. Okay, So I could say, I'm going to do the same thing, what's the probability of not randomly picking a pepperoni? Of not randomly picking a pepperoni? Well, the, that's, that question is asking specifically, how many of the pep of the pizzas are not pepperonis? We would say there's five sausages and one cheese. So the total that are not pepperoni is six. So the chances of me picking a pizza at random and opening the box and it not being a pepperoni is a six out of ten chance. In my example, I could reduce this if I wanted to. Okay, I could do a three in five chance. So there's a three out of five chance. Okay. And I could even talk about this being a percentage. This would be six. This could be sixty percent chance, okay? Or this could be a zero point six chance. But we want this in a fraction form, just so you understand. So leave it in fraction form. But uh, when we're talking about things not happening, you just have to count the number of favorable outcomes of all the other things besides the one thing we're trying not to do or trying not to get. And that's kind of how the the not probability works. I hope these examples and this video were helpful to you. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact your math teacher or, you know, use the internet to look things up and get help. Um, not to find the answers, not to have somebody solve the answers for you, but to actually read about probability and how to calculate probability. Have a good day.